Hello guys, I'm the Not Wild Waffle, and today I'm doing something a little different. I'm doing a t the Binding of Isaac post Wrath of the Lamb Beginner's Guide. So this is if you're just starting out, you don't really know what to do, you see the game, you think it's going to be fun, but you're not really enjoying it because you keep dying. Well, I'm going to go over some of the mistakes that you might be making, and some of the things that you should know, and that you should not or you that you should do this is going to be a very informal guide we're going to play as isaac because it is the binding of isaac we're not going to be using the d d6 um I, i'm go only going to go to so far in probably the basement part two the end of the basement part two where we fight the boss so uh first things off uh wasd is how you move that's pretty obvious it was in the first room you shoot poop, and if you didn't know, sometimes you can get pennies or hearts, or spirit hearts out of bombs, uh, out of poop. If you didn't know what a spirit heart is, it's a temporary heart. It's sort of like a red heart, but if you take the damage, then it doesn't reappear, or you can't refill it until you find another one. So, yeah. Well, you can't refill it. It's just permanently gone if you lose it. See, look, a penny came out of the poop, so it's always a good idea to shoot the poop. You could find something like a penny. And pennies are used to go to the shop. The shop is... It requires a key to get into. And you typically want to have 15 cents it, unless you're desperate. You want to have 15 cents because the average item that... The average, like... I consider there two, three tiers. Bottom tier is three cents, which is a red heart. Middle tier, tarot card, bombs, pills, spirit hearts, which are five cents, and higher tier, which is, um, like, your good items, like the ladder, and, uh, like, I don't know, the, the book of revelations or something, I don't know. But you can get, there's three tiers, I consider, but you always want to have at least 15 cents, unless it's an extreme case where it, you have like the steam sale. The steam sale you can get from fighting greed or you can sometimes get it in item rooms. It makes half of the it makes half of your items I mean like I mean ugh, I'm so bad at this. It makes half of the items it makes all the items in the shop half price. So that fifteen cent item in the shop well now it's seven cents so you can get it for what you want. Okay, here's one of the first things I want to say. Now, you see this chest, you can't get to it, there are rocks there. Well, you can use a bomb, you can press shift or E. I press shift, just because it's a little further away. I don't know, it does. it's just your preference. And there's a golden chest for us, for us, which I will explain. But brown chests typically have, like, money, sometimes keys, bombs, and red hearts. But golden chests have, they can either have a really crappy item, or they can have good items. Uh, they ter typically have, like money blah 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 you could and well you could eh, they typically have like money keys bombs but then they could also have temporary uh, they could have permanent like damage up speed up range up so you typically want to open those but you've got to make sure if you only have one key and you haven't gone to the item room yet which is this little room right there which always gives you an item. See, I got Roid Rage Speed plus Shot Speed or Tears Up. If you already haven't gone there, then you definitely want to go there. Don't waste your keys on a golden chest unless you're certain you have enough. So, yes. That was just explaining some of the basic, basic things that you'll come across. And here is, as you see, a boss fight. I'm fighting a really difficult version of Monstro. Well, I don't find him that difficult. But, guide for fighting Monstro. Just keep moving. Don't run into him. Keep moving. He's not hard at all. Like, look. I'm fighting two of them. Hands down. Easy. Like, as long as you keep moving, you won't get hit by the bullets unless you move into them. Uh, it's He's typically an easy boss. Same as Larry Jr. I recommend for Larry Jr. just stay all the way across the room. Like, He's down at the bottom of the screen. Be able to shoot him through the, through a long section of rocks. That's what I recommend. See, I just took stupid damage. But 
They t since he's red, he will definitely give us a heart. But, I'm fighting... I have beaten the game plenty of times, probably like 20, 30 times. So I get to fight all the difficult versions of the bosses. And here we come across dog food, which is health up. Now, this is one of my main things about being a beginner in the game. First thing you want to do, obviously not take damage. But if you want to become better at dodging, like, or knowing the patterns of, patterns of the enemies, well, that that's kind of like... You gotta suffer before you get to the worst. Because you have to play a lot if you want to gain more experience. It's a it's like a give give lose relationship, whatever. Um but yeah, you gotta play a lot if you wanna become good at the game. That's one of the main things that you have to realize, like, you're just not gonna be good at this game. It's right off the bat, you're gonna suck. Uh no doubt about it. I've played one hundred and thirty eight hours 139 as this recording goes on but um I I'm I still am not that good do you, do you check out my binding of Isaac let's play it's not it's well a mess Ugh. but I have fun playing this game that's the most important part about this game if you're stressing yourself out making yourself all sad saying like oh I can't get further than the chest or I can't get further than the basement part too or the seller, I suck at the widow. Oh my god, I'm not having fun anymore. Well, just stop playing it. Listen, this game is about having fun. That's what video games are about, winding down, having fun. So, if you're not having fun playing it, then, dude, take a break. You gotta take a break sometimes. But, you know, what was I, what was I saying about before? Yeah, you, you gotta gain experience. As you play, so don't expect it to just be there. And you gotta know what the items do and stuff. That's you don't just know what the items do off the bat. I mean, it says something right here, but sometimes it says something that you don't understand. So, see, it just says space to use, and then you use it and you get nothing. You see, but the slot machine actually uses your money. It's like a slot machine, but just portable. And for the purpose of this video, I shouldn't be re-rolling items, because if you're a beginner, you won't have the D6, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to re-roll it and get Gish. He's really good familiars. That comes to familiars. Familiars are... They're cool. They're buddies by your side. They can do different things. One shoots a laser. His name is Robo Baby. This one, Gish, he slows down the enemy, so that's very useful. There's a lot of um, referencing, referencing back to Ed's first games, like Gish and Little Steve, like um, Gish and Time FC UK. I say FC UK because I don't know how that pronounced. So, okay, okay. So, come. And I was talking about health before, health ups. But then I got onto like this other rant or something. But um, health ups, very important. One of my main things for you guys is you want as much health as you can get. What I'm talking about is take every health up you can get and don't do deals with the devil because you're going to be using those health ups if you suck at the game. You'll be making stupid mistakes. It comes with being a beginner. You're a noob at the game. That's why you're here and I'm telling you about some stuff. So health ups no deals with the devil unless you have health off the screen or you just feel confident in your playing ability right then and try to avoid spike trap rooms unless there's tons of extra hearts on the floor because chances are if you're a beginner you'll be using the heart that you use to replace the heart that you lost going into the spike trap room so I don't recommend spike trap rooms if you're not that experienced in the game um, one thing I have to say about the items, which I was talking about earlier, the wiki is your friend. It is there for you. Use the wiki. Use the wiki. I'm just telling you, if you have any questions about that, this game, you want to use the wiki. Use the wiki. Use the wiki. Okay, so, um, as you see, uh, that red guy blew up this hole in the wall, and those are called secret rooms. This is the top secret room, 
the top secret room, I just call it the top because it's very hard to find. It can be on any room, branching off any room, except for, okay, look, there's two possibilities where the regular secret room can be. Regular secret room could be there, or here, so far, as the map isn't fully uncovered, but regular secret rooms are surrounded by typically three rooms, and you use a bomb right in the center of the wall that, you know, connects to the secret room, and then you can blow that up, and if it's not there, then you go to another three surrounded room thing, or four in this case, but it's more likely that it's surrounded by three rooms. And you just walk into the thing, and there you go, you're in the secret room. The top secret rooms can have eternal hearts, wow, I... Maggie's Faith. And that brings me on to another subject, which is trinkets. But, top secret rooms can have slot machines like that. That's a fortune teller machine, which gives out trinkets and spirit hearts. And then the regular secret rooms typically have money, but they could have items such as uh, spider bite, which slows down enemies, with, like with your shots, as a tear effect. And, yeah, money basically almost all the time. Except for sometimes it has, like, the Book of Belial and stuff, and yeah. So those are the secret rooms for you. Here is an... This is called the Boss Trap Room. Not a Boss Trap Room. This is called the Mob Trap Room. So, for the... I'm just gonna do this for the video. You go into the Mob Trap Room. You take the prize. Then you're gonna have to fight three waves of enemies. They're not always gonna be th this difficult. Difficulty varies in what floor you're on. So if you're in the womb, which you probably won't get to because you're a beginner and you don't even have the womb unlocked, but if you're in the depths and you go into a mob trap room, you're gonna have a much more difficult time than I'm having right now with hoppers and uh, rejected meat boys. So there we go, we're done with the mob trap room. We gained a penny out of it, wasn't worth it, but for the purpose of this video, it was, because I wanted to show you it. So, hopefully we can find a blue rock, which we did not. Um, yeah, but blue rocks are, they're blue, they have, they're slightly blue tinted, and when you blow them up, you they drop spirit hearts, which, as you see here, I had a whole blue thing right there, that's a spirit heart, and I already explained those earlier in the video, but if you didn't hear me, they're just like red hearts, but they're irreplaceable. At, when you lose them, you lose them, and you go down to your regular health. As you see, I've already lost it. Uh, let's just say I did that because I'm filming this tutorial. Uh, let's not say I did that out of stupidity of dying to the Duke of Flies. Okay, so, as you see, there was a white heart drop right there, and a deal with the devil. Now, these white hearts are very useful. They count as health ups. If you find half, they they always come in half ones. Um, you typically won't find two on a floor unless you're really unlucky. I meant lucky. But if you grab this at the end of the floor before you go down to whatever floor is next, then it will transform into a regular health up. So that's really useful. And yeah. So I'm going to go check out what's in the deal with the devil room. Perfect. I'm going to show you what the deal with the devil room is. Um, deal with the devil room. You get it. It seems more random. But it seems random. But typically you get it if you don't take basically any damage on the floor. I mean sometimes you could take no damage and not get one. But your chances are drastically increased if you take no damage on that floor. Then deal with the Devil Rooms, they, they offer exclusive items. Some can be found other places, some can't. Like, this is um the Pact. And if I take this, it gives me a damage up. And other uh, this gives me a tears up too and a speed up. And it takes away two of my red hearts. That is why I don't recommend, if you're a beginner, that you go to the Mob Trap. I meant these rooms. Because, if you're beginning, you want to hold on to every last bit of health you have, because you'll be using it. You're going to be taking damage, and as I said earlier, you're not going to stop taking damage until you play it a lot, because you gain experience. So, yeah, 
Don't take deals with the devil unless you're confident in your playing skills. Now, here's another item, which is called Guppy's Head, which I'm not going to take because it's not really worth it, but if you really want to know what it does, it it's a space bar item, it recharges, and it spawns blue flies. Blue flies can be found by red chests, um, but yeah, they can be found in red chests, which again, as I said earlier, can be found in spike trap rooms, which I don't recommend you go into, because unless you have flying, it takes away a whole heart. I mean, with flying, it only takes half a heart, so yeah. And talk about, let's talk about spacebar items for a second. Spacebar items have a specific duty. Now, you're not going to know what it does until you try it out. So, yeah, the D6, which you unlock after beating Satan with Blue Baby, which is very hard to do. Blue Baby's a really bad character. Really bad. But, um, this re-rolls the item right here. So, if I used it right now, it re-rolled it into an item that I don't really want. But, it doesn't really matter. I'm having a good run today. So, yeah. I got a tears up when I could have got a tears up and two spirit hearts. But whatever, for the sake of this video, yeah. They each have specific um, recharging times. Like, some will recharge, like, they'll get one bar of recharge every room. Some will get one bar of recharge every half room, which is kind of my weird way and awkward way of explaining that some recharge two bars in one room. And some rapidly recharge, and yeah. So here's another Celtic Cross. It's not really a good item. It, I think it randomly gives you... I don't really know. It does. See, the wiki's your friend. Trust me, go to the wiki. You'll know. So yeah. I actually put a link in the description to the wiki because the wiki's your friend, guys. You have another friend, finally. After playing hours and hours of The Binding of Isaac, you got yourself a friend! And I think we are on an extra large floor, which I will explain right now. Sadly, we are on an extra large floor. Extra large floors consist of really weird layouts. Like, look, it's just a big block. There's no branching off. Well, there is branching off, but it's just a weird, really weird layout that I don't really like extra large floors. Okay, they have two item rooms, two boss rooms right after each other. You don't have to go to them right after each other, but they're right next to each other, that's what I mean. And one shop, which kind of sucks, but whatever. It's not really that big of a deal. And, oh, I hate these guys. You got some, you'll find some enemies that you really hate. Oh, these guys, I hate them. I hate them so much. And they take like 20 hits. These guys were worse before 1.48 came out. But anyway, yeah, so extra large floors are a pain, especially when you have them on the basement. Because usually on the basement part one, or the basement or cellar, I meant to say basement or cellar. But usually when you have the basement part one, the first item room doesn't require a key, so you have like some time to you know, gain some items that would allow you to get a key. But, in an extra large floor, you don't have that. It sucks. So you gotta find two keys, not just one. And it's just really hard, so I recommend you just quit. I mean, that's not really a good idea, but just quit if you are on the basement XL or the cellar XL, because it's just not good. <laughs> no. It's just not good for your mental health, so... Yeah, extra large floors are a pain. I kind of just like the regular floors, but whatever. And there are also... Wait, what? How did I get an eternal... Oh yeah, Maggie's Faith. Okay, I never explained trinkets yet. But trinkets are like a permanent item. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a permanent item that you have. Like, some do different things. Like, one, I think it's the goat's foot or something, lamb's foot, it gives you extra damage. Uh, this one, Maggie's Faith, it gives you an eternal heart at the beginning of every floor. So, I have an eternal heart at the beginning of every floor. 
and they do just do specific things like I'll tell you the ones that are really good um, in my opinion pinky eye good it gives you a random chance of firing a poisonous tear every once in a while so yeah those that's that I really like cancer might not sound that pretty but um, I like cancer it gives you like extremely fast tears so you're like a little machine gun um, look out for the Polaroid which you won't unlock for a really long time but when you do it's a good item because it gets you to the chest and that's basically beating the game you you wanna look for goat hoof which I was just describing and I actually remember the name uh, that gives you damage up look out for that you want mom's pearl isn't too too bad um, it's not too too bad because it gives you an extra chance of eternal heart droppings so eternal hearts are pretty good so yeah and I'm gonna explain the library which we just got a fantastic item from which is the book of revelations let's use that which gives you an extra spirit heart the library it contains only book items so you can find the book of Belial in there the book of revelations which I have which is a really good item if you have blue baby you either like this is basically just like the blue baby must have to succeed like book of revelations or the nail because those give you spirit hearts and Blue Baby is a character that you unlock after beating the game ten times, and he doesn't have any red hearts. He's incapable of getting any red hearts, so you're basically screwed, and you need all the spirit hearts you can get. So you pretty much always want to live on spirit hearts with Blue Baby. I mean, it's possible to beat it if you have extreme luck, but you want an item that gives you spirit hearts when you're fighting Blue Baby. But the library. It gives you books. Yeah, that's basically it. It can give you Book of Revelations, Book of Belial, Book of Shadows, the Book of Sin. It gives, it just gives you various book items. It's it's pretty worth it if you don't have a really good space bar item. So yeah. Okay, as you see right there, I just gave my money to this little guy. His name is Judgment, and if you give him pennies, it's a random amount he will give you an item like it might take 20 pennies it might take one might take five as it just took there but he can give you health ups he can give you the book of revelations he can give you the battery again if you don't know what these items are just I told you the wiki's your friend go look it up on the wiki actually just that's that's just the rule for everything look it up on the wiki <laughs> Seriously, if you don't know how to play a game, just there's a wiki for it. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, those are it's uh, the libraries are worth it. They're pretty good unless you have like an already amazing item, spacebar item, because the libraries only give out spacebar items. Whew, I'm like I don't I don't know. I'm just talking. <laughs> this is taking a while. I'm surprised at how much I know. And of course, as soon as we get a good book item, we get another good book item. That is Book of Belial. When you use it, it gives you extraordinary damage. For, it charges every six rooms. And it's pretty useful. It's the Book of Belial. Judas has it automatically. So if you want to test that item out, you got to unlock Judas, which I believe you get from beating the game like three times. I don't know. Oh god, I'm taking so much damage. Please, god. Okay, I'm not... Oh, God. Oh, my God. Okay, the Celtic Cross occasionally gives you a uh, shield, I guess. That is useful. Thank you, Celtic Cross. And, oh, yeah, green guys that explode bombs in your face. I didn't talk about those yet. These guys are, like, my worst enemies. Oh, crap, I almost just ran into one. Their bombs do a whole heart, and I don't want to lose this eternal heart. I just took, like so much damage see this game is is extremely luck based so as you're hearing me talk like you're not gonna have such a good run every single time like since I it took me like a hundred times just to beat mom <laughs> like I just am not good at like 
I don't know what these this is called. I don't know what type of genre game this is. These guys are like the worst. Same as nutsack flies. They're the worst kind of flies. Oh, thank God I got that. Oh, and also I probably I think I did this already. But if you place a bomb next to a rock that's near a gap, you can open the thing. Yeah, if you can get to the segment thing. So yeah, it's pretty useful. And also I want to mention tarot cards, which you randomly get. They do random things. They're pretty cool. They're pretty useful, just like pills, which you randomly get. They do randomly random things. And this one is temperance, which gives you a blood bank. And I'm not... I'm just going to stay away from temperance because this one, if you use a blood bank when you have any type of eternal heart it's permanently gone it uses that first so beware don't use blood banks when you have eternal hearts I've learned that the hard way and my keyboard has learned that the hard way too and I'm about to like lose this eternal heart but I guess it's okay and that's what I'm talking about it uh, stuff situations can drastically change when you're playing this game and you're not having a good run just stick it through don't like kill yourself because situations can either go up or down and sometimes they like to go down but sometimes actually rarely they go up so just be aware that the situation can change pretty freaking fast see we're playing the blighted ovum which is a it's just a boss I really hate but I guess it's cool it's cool Blighted over him. He runs after you. He leaves creep, and this creep is, uh, if you step on it, you you lose a heart. So don't even risk it. Now we're fighting the fallen. Oh my god, this is like worst. This is the worst day ever. The fallen is a really hard boss, but it drops deals with the devil rooms, and um, it drops deal with the devil room items. It's just a really hard boss. <laughs> Use bombs. If you come across the Fallen, which I don't think you will. Oh, crap. I lost my eternal heart. Whatever. Use bombs. Like, right now. I'm just being impatient. That's why I'm using bombs. But, you know, Fallen is a really hard boss. Give yourself some credit if you beat him. Because he's pretty hard. Uh, don't give yourself some credit if you've been playing this game for, like, a million hours. If you are then I don't know why you're watching this tutorial because you should pretty much know every freaking corner of this game. You should know every layout. Yeah, like, even as you start playing, you start to recognize every single layout of the rooms. It's like crazy. You just know this game. You're like, you, you look at a diagram and it's the layout of like a floor and you're just like, that's a binding of Isaac. But, yes, I know I have 15 cents and I could go to the shop, but that's one of the things that you'll notice as you play further on. You get really lazy. Like, backtracking is. It's not. Your worst enemy is backtracking. Because you don't. You don't freaking want to go anywhere once you're somewhere. And I'm going to use, like, all my money on this. And I used a key on this, too, which probably isn't wise. I'm not even, like, following my own guide. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention what I got from the Fallen. I got, ooh, I'm gonna use that, but, um, I got Ouija board tears, which is very cool, yeah, I'm, I'm done with that, because <laughs> each time I walk up to it, if I want to play it even more, uh, it'll, it'll screw me up, not really, I'll just have to, like, search for my trinket, but, wait, what was I saying? Gosh, I don't remember. That's This is like the first time. I'm surprised. But yeah. As you see, your situation can drastically change. I'm pretty sure I was talking about that like five minutes ago. As you see, you kind of forget what you're talking about when you're playing this game because you're so involved in it. And you're like, F this. I'm playing this game. I'm not talking to you, audience. But um, yeah. This is another mob trap room. As you see, it's, it's gotten very different from the basement mob trap room that I fought. Uh, yeah, it's 
now we're fighting these fetuses. They're unborn fetuses, if you didn't know. I mean, how would you not know? Oh, and we're gonna be fighting zombies, so... You're gonna see why everybody hates zombies. Oh yeah, I recall I was talking about at the beginning of this episode I was only gonna play up to the basement part 2 or something. Oh yeah, I remember that. I have a lot of stuff to say. And we still haven't come across any blue tinted rocks. But zombies are really annoying. One of the best things about Gish is that they, it makes it easier to kill zombies. That's like the only good thing about Gish. Just kidding. Not really. But one of the bonuses of having a little Gish by your side. One of the many bonuses, because Gish is really good. Oh, thank god, I didn't take much damage. Oh god, I jinxed it. Jinkies, I jinxed it! Okay, so... <sighs> Man, I'm like out of breath. I'm seriously... That's one thing that you gotta be aware of. If you buy this game, you won't stop playing. So you'll be out of breath. Even after like walking up the stairs just to get to your computer. Whew. Yeah, this game requires a lot of time. And I don't even know when I'm going to end this. I should probably end it soon. But I want to say, since this is a tutorial, and if you're watching this, and you have any, like, questions about this game, like you found an item that you don't know how the hell to use, just, just call me. Just call me on Skype. I'll call you back. Actually, I probably won't, but I kind of will? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. But, if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments about this game. Like, if you have any comments about wait, questions about this game, leave it in the comments of this video. I just got my words messed up there. That's what happens when you're not focusing on commentary. You're focusing on killing these these guys. I sense a period joke there. Boom. This is a item that's is kind of stupid look you place bombs three I'm just gonna place four stand the frick away bam they all blow up that's what boom does and it gives you five extra bombs so just pick it up put it down <laughs> that's what I do and I didn't mention how I got the world card the world card just shows the whole map you probably figured that out already but I don't know, you guys are beginners, you guys are noobs at the game. I don't know what to think of you. I don't know. Also, one thing that has helped me drastically, just watch, just watch some Binding of Isaac Let's Plays. I'm, I'm not saying anything about mine, but... I do one. I do, I do, I do a Binding of Isaac Let's Play. Watch it every day. Actually, I don't even post a video every day about it. But, um, yeah, I do... Uh, Binding of Isaac Let's Play. Go check that out. I mean, like, I'm, I never played this well. Like, and I'm usually talking about random stuff. Stuff that isn't relevant to the game. So, yeah. Here's Bob's rotten head, which can be used as a bomb. As you know, bombs can do damage to bosses, so, uh, some people use it as, like, a defensive thing. Some people use it as a bomb if you're bomb short. So, it's a decent item. It's nothing to really complain about, so... There's tons of things to complain about, like spiders! And also, uh, when you have Ouija board, it's really hard to shoot poop. Just gonna put that out there. As I was saying earlier, you wanna... You wanna shoot poop, cause... Who doesn't wanna find out what's in the poop that they produce? Actually, I don't know. But when you think about this game, it's kind of sick. Like, some of the items have some really weird things in it like mom's pad sexy but okay I hate this room see as you know you'll see what enemies you like and you don't like and you'll find out the patterns of tons of the enemies that you don't like so then you can get better at those enemies slaughtering those enemies should I say oh you a heart this is like the first heart drop in a while but yeah, you'll get better at dodging, you'll get better at observing. As you When you first start out, you're like, what the hell is going on? Now it's like you're just handling like it like a boss. And also, I got that skeleton key, which gives you 99 keys. There's also an item that gives you 99 cents and 99 bombs. 99 cents 
you get it from slot machines. It's really random. Sometimes the slot will, machine will just explode, and it'll give you this dollar bill thing. But then sometimes it will explode, and it just gives you, like, a penny and a bomb or something. And you can also blow up slot machines, uh, blood banks, or those little guys with the caps, the little guessing game guys. So, yeah. You can blow up vendors. That's cool. Cool to know. And these are one of my least favorite free Wrath of the Lamb guys. I don't like, I don't hate them as much as zombies, but they are pretty annoying, and you'll find yourself taking a lot of damage if you are a beginner. Look, even now, expert player right here, <laughs> expert player, uh, even now, I'm taking a lot of damage from those guys. And you saw there was just a tinted rock, so it was all great right there. That was a perfect situation to use the bomb. And here's an item room. Here's the shop. As I said, some items... I told you about the tier thing at the beginning of the episode, like 3 cents, 5 cents, 15 cents. Well, sometimes items will be on sale. And see, like, the map right here, which shows you the location of every single room, is on sale right now. So, that's cool. I took it. And then there's spirit hearts, which, can, which are pretty much... I'd say 75% of the time they're there. And as you see, well, you guys won't be fighting any of the four horsemen of the apocalypse because if you're a beginner and you're just starting out, you haven't beaten to the, the game to the point where you unlock these four bosses, which is pretty lucky for you. But I have beaten the game no numerous amount of times, so I have sadly unlocked them. But they dropped the cube of meat, and the cube of meat is this thing that circles around you it's like it's like a bullet protection thing but then if you get two cubes of meat it turns into another thing and if you get another cube of meat it turns in turns into this little thing i was really bad explaining there and i'm going to take both of these deal with the devil room items cuz they're both really good now i don't recommend this but if you watch my Binding of Isaac Let's Play, you know that I always make stupid decisions like this. So, yeah. But I don't recommend taking both deal with devil items like I just did. But whatever. We just got a health up. And the nail, it gives you. Well, wait, let me explain it. I'll show you. It gives you a spirit heart, which is good because I wouldn't have replaced the Book of Revelations except for if it was with the nail. And it also gives you freaking damage tears. It gives you extra damage. So it is one of the most useful spacebar items. It I'd consider it my favorite spacebar item. Except for the candle, which is also really good, but it's kind of rare to find the candle. This one it is rare to find, but it's still not that common. Yeah, it's not common. But it, it recharges the same amount of time as your Book of Revelations, just a million times better because it gives you extra damage. And it's just amazing. It's like a Book of Belial and Book of Revelations combined. And that's if you're if you know what those items are, you you know what I'm talking about and how they're so good. Oh thank god I killed that guy. And there I also got that other thing, the spirit of the night. Hey, look, there are the blue, sl blue flies that I was talking about earlier. Spirit of the Night. Oh, that sucks. It keeps giving us good item room items. But Spirit of the Night gives you flying and Ouija board tears. The Ouija board tears isn't really useful because... I don't know, I already had them or something? But Spirit of the Night equals flying, and flying equals ever gratefulness, forever gratefulness. Because you'll always be happy when you have flying. Because <laughs> flying, you can just, you can just look. I'm on top of the rock, and I'm killing these guys. I am such a camper right now, but I am so proud of it. I mean, like, you'll feel bad, like, that you're cheating the system, but everybody does it, so don't feel bad. Either way, always get flying, unless it's in a deal with the devil room. I'm kind of going against what I said earlier, but... Flying is always good. That's my point here. Don't take deals with devil. Uh, I'm doing it anyway, so... I just am not following my guide. But then again, I'm not a beginner, so... Yeah. 
This has been more like a tutorial. This has been more like an explanation of the game, not tips. Whatever. It's close enough. I'm gonna call it how how to beginner's guide for the Binding of Isaac. And um, sometimes you find the item, the boss room, in the depths. Once you get to the depths, part two, where the Necro or Necropolis, part two, or I think it's just called Necropolis. Then you get to the mom boss fight. This is the mom boss fight. And once you enter this room, you cannot escape. So I don't I knew I didn't have anywhere else to be. That's why I entered this room. I could have, you know, explored the floor a little bit more, but I don't really care. Cause I'm not actually like really playing seriously. Like I beat the game as Isaac every run, basically, because I I don't know, because that's just how it works out. Like, you just beat the game with the characters that you don't need to beat it with. Because there's an achievement system, and as you play it more, you unlock stuff in the game. So, like, I need to beat it as Eve. And you unlock characters, too, from beating the game. And that's a really rare form of Gish. He shoots out, like, 10 billion bullets. But yeah, regular mom. Uh, if you know how to fight her, then not so hard. Oh, but I might die here because I'm not doing so great damage. And it's not. Oh, I should have recharged my nail. That's what I should have done. That's what I should have done. That's what I should have done. I still got her, got her with the bomb, so it's cool. But yeah, she spawns a shit ton of enemies. Excuse my language. She's she's not that difficult. Mom's heart is the e is easier than this. Believe me when I say that. Mom's heart, you know what I'm talking about if you play this game. Mom's heart is freaking easy. If you just know what to do, Mom's heart, you can t you can easily take her on. Like, she's not hard at all. Some of the enemies that she spawns is hard, but not in general. In general, she's not hard. In general, I'm hard. Oh. Oh, that's stupid. Isaac. I'm actually going to die here, it seems to be. If I die here, that'd be perfect. Honestly, because I don't really want to get much further, because I want to end this video. I want to show you how in-depth this game is. And I almost just walked into that bullet. If, if, I'm just going to end the video after I beat Mom, if I beat her. Oh, I died. But, so, I hope this video helped you out. This was more like a walkthrough and explaining everything in the game basically so if you enjoyed it then like it it took a lot of effort to talk this much it was basically non-stop talking I'm like out of breath this was my exercise for the day so if you want to see any more of my content like my let's play or walkthroughs actually same thing kind of then do that so thank you guys for watching I will produce daily videos if you didn't know Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, like it. All likes are much appreciated. I need all the support I can get. Subscribe! As I already I'm just repeating myself. Please, just do it. <laughs> okay, so, leave feedback. Leave comments asking me questions about this game. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.